It's after church. Let's go for lunch. Okay. <laughs> Good evening. I'd like to call the December 16th meeting of the West Sacramento Planning Commission to order. We typically start with a Pledge of Allegiance. Tonight, I'd like to ask our Vice Chair, Russ Liebig, to lead us in the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you very much. Our first item, and welcome folks, uh, our first item is our presentations by the public on matters not on the agenda but within the jurisdiction of the commission. And I have no request to speak at this time. However, if you'd like to speak on, on the items before us this evening, when you entered on your left, there was a, a slip of paper. And if you'd like to fill those out and hand them to our clerk over to your left, she'll bring them up to me for the particular items. We ask folks to keep their comments to three minutes so that there's equity and fairness um, and we can uh, go through all the folks who'd like to, to present to us. So there are no um, items before us on item A, so we'll move to correspondence and staff communications um, from the city planner. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the commission. Uh, tonight is our last planning commission meeting of the year. And I just want to let remind everyone that City Hall will be closed uh, during the holiday break uh, from December 24th through January 2nd, and we will reopen on Monday, January 3rd. For that reason, staff is unable to uh, pull together planning commission packets for the January 6th meeting, so the January 6th meeting has been canceled. So the next meeting of the Planning Commission will be January 20th, 2011. Last night, the council um, met at a normally scheduled meeting. Uh, they did not make any appointments to any commissions last night. They did indicate that uh, they have reviewed the applications and that uh, appointments may be pending in January. They also uh, conducted the public hearing and first reading on the medical marijuana uh, ordinance, and they voted 5-0 uh, to prohibit at this time. The second reading is scheduled for January 19th. Um, they also received a status update on the United States Army Corps of Engineers general reevaluation report and that is for our flood protection program. Um, the main highlight of that uh, status update is the final report uh, now is uh, looking like September 2014, when that will be finaled and uh, be taken to Congress. And that concludes staff's correspondence. Thank you, Ms. Hamilton. Um, now we'll move to disclosure of ex parte communications. This is when commissioners who've had communications about any of the items before us this evening share that with us because we're in a public <coughs> forum and so it's fair for the public to know what other conversations outside of, of, outside of tonight's meetings have occurred. So are there any commissioners who've had conversations? Commissioner Moore. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chairman, I had a, I went and visited with the applicant on item number two. Madam Chairman, I'd like to also uh, let you know that I did meet with the applicants uh, item number two uh, on site there. And I might also add at this time that I'm going to be abstaining from item number three. My family owns property uh, near that, that uh, location. Thank you, Mr. Morzini. Any other disclosures? All right, that moves us to our first item on the, which is the consent agenda, consideration and approval of the minutes from the December 2nd, 2010 Planning Commission meeting. Are there any um, items of discussion or is there a motion to approve? Madam Chairman, I would like to uh, make a correction to the minutes. Okay. Um, please let the minutes reflect that I abstained from the consent agenda vote entry number two. Okay, are there any other corrections or additions or if there are none, is there a motion to approve? the set of minutes? Madam Chairman, I'd make a motion that we approve the minutes as corrected. There's a motion by Mr. Moore. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Liebig. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 
Oh, no, I need to abstain, excuse me. <laughs> Just like you did last time. I, um, so I'm abstaining and the rest of the commissioners have voted aye. Thank you very much. We'll move on to, I should have followed your lead, Russ. Um, move on to the regular agenda and we have um, a public hearing regarding the instilling goodness private school conditional <laughs> use permits. And we'll have, we'll first start just so folks that are here this evening, we start with a staff report and then I believe we'll have, we'll open a public hearing. We'll have folks who want to comment on that and ap the applicant if they wish. We may ask some questions and then we'll close the public hearing and then we'll bring it back to deliberate. Thank you. With that, Ms. White. Good evening, Chairperson Sandine and members of the Planning the city of the Dharma Ram seeks approval of a conditional uh, use permit to operate a private all-girls school as an accessory use to their existing facilities. The school campus will be located on approximately two and a half acres of the 13.85 acres that are owned by the Dharma Ram. The school is anticipated to build out in 2019 and potentially serve anywhere from 80 to 100 students and employ 35 staff and teachers with half of the staff living on the, on the campus, uh, well, on the site. The school will start off small with an elementary school beginning with grades K through four and gradually add five students each year ending at grade 12. Two buildings will be renovated to house the school, an existing building that had been previously used as hotel rooms for the form, former um, El Rancho Hotel will include classrooms, restrooms, and a parents' lounge. The second building, which houses a racquetball court and a deck that was used as a spectator viewing area for the tennis courts, will be converted to include a multi-purpose room, library with a mezzanine and a teacher break room. Since all the findings can be made for this project, staff is recommending that the Planning Commission continue the public hearing, certify that the Planning Commission has determined that the mitigated negative declaration is the appropriate level of environmental review under CEQA, and finds that the mitigated negative declaration re reflect, represents the independent judgment of the city, approve the requested conditional use permit subject to the findings and conditions identified in the staff report, and approve the mitigation monitoring plan. Um, the applicant is present this evening and will be presenting a short PowerPoint presentation to the Planning Commission. And Great. I'm available to answer any questions that the Planning Commission may have. Thank you, Ms. White. Any questions before we receive the, receive the PowerPoint? All right, I think that we'll, we'll see the, receive the applicant presentation. Thank you. If you could introduce yourself too, that's helpful for us, thanks. Thank you, Madam Chair and Commission. <clears throat> My name is Brian Collins with Pacific Design Group. We are the applicant for the Dharma Realm. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, as uh, Sandra White mentioned, we are asking for a conditional use permit for existing property that's located in the northeast corner of Garden and Highway 257, I mean 275. Um, they are ex two existing buildings. Um, this is an overview uh, showing where the school campus will be located on their property. As you can see, uh, to behind the school is the new uh, complex of housing and living lofts. Um, to the left is the new campus and community center, and above is the city hall. This is an overview plan of their entire campus. What we show in purple will be the designated area for the school for when parents come, up, come in to drop off their kids and pick up their kids. All traffic is internal. Uh, there will be no external drop off or pick up. And then uh, slightly in red, um, which you can kind of see, is the path of travel that the kids will take to get back to the school campus. The kids will be led by a person on site to the back. <clears throat> Next, we have the overview of the campus. What is in orange is the existing uh, two-story building that will house the classrooms. Uh, we will be uh, renovating the first floor and providing accessible um, girls' restrooms and a men's restroom. <clears throat> In blue will be the uh, multi-purpose room, which right now is uh, existing racquetball courts. In yellow is going to be the library with mezzanine, and next to that would be the teacher's break room. 
Here is an overall plan view of the first floor of what we are proposing once we go into the um, building permit process. So we're going to submit f five classrooms, one parent lounge, ADA accessible restrooms for the girls, and one ADA accessible restroom for the men. As for the second floor, that is for future growth. So we are not going to be doing anything with the second floor at this time. That will be under a separate tenant improvement. This plan shows the existing racquetball courts, which will be converted to the multi-purpose room and library. Starting on the right is the first floor. We will be having the library, the teacher's break room, and the multi-purpose room to the left. We'll be re removing the existing racquetball doors and providing ADA accessible um, new doors to get in and fill in any existing doors and then match the existing building facade. To the left is the proposed mezzanine for the library, which will house seating and, uh, and other entrance to the upper deck, which is above the teacher's break room, which was the existing viewing, viewing room for the tennis courts. <coughs> Here are just a few key, key points of the school. Um, that they are bringing to the, the it will enhance the diversity of the K through 12 educational opportunities for local residents. The school is a channel for increasing public interactive with the Buddhist community. It will enhance the multicultural presence. Um, we feel the school, the school actually holds an annual cultural event for the youth and invites <coughs> the public, public teachers, outside students to come and participate. <clears throat> they hold a, um, an educational program for local, local Buddhists as well as other parents looking for education that emphasizes character, development, academic, and <clears throat> academic excellence, and a broad multicultural and international perspective. If this is approved, this will be the third school of its kind in the U.S., Um, in closing, as we agree with Sandra's um, traffic analysis as well, that there will be no significant impact. As we say, we will be holding up to 80, about 80 students at the build out at 2019. Um, anything above that, we understand that we will probably need to go into a traffic study. Um, so therefore, we feel that we should proceed with the CUP and allow us to continue. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Do you have any questions? Any questions for our presenter? No? All right. Thank you very right. much. Thank you. Sandra, any, any other speakers before us tonight? I don't have any requests to speak. So, okay. Well, I'll bring it back to the commission then and close the public hearing and, and leave it to us for deliberation. Any comments from the commission? Questions? Russ? Um, go, Mr. Liebig? I'll go ahead and start. <clears throat> um, I. I actually did um, have uh, a couple questions. Um, first one, there were 15 additional spaces that are being required. I'm, I'm unclear as why. Um, so this is on page four, section four. Um, so you're talking about parking? Parking, parking spaces. Parking okay. spaces, yes. Um, that 15 additional parking spaces will be provided. This brings up a total of 269 parking spaces which mm -hmm. seems excessive for this school. What I was explaining is that they're providing 15 parking spaces, but this uh, facility has 254, so it, it, you know, they're gonna have more than adequate parking spaces, so we're not requiring more than what's being provided. That's what I was trying to explain. Okay, um, so the, the 15 spaces is of the existing 254 spaces. So we're not requiring additional on-street parking, which is... No, we're not requiring parking. any on-street. This is all on the site. All on-site. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. It, um, I'm, I'm misinterpreted to read that it was uh, in, a, in addition to the 254. So, um, 
I had a uh, comment or a question on one of the conditions uh, regarding architectural integrity. Mm -hmm. um, this is uh, regarding the, uh, well, or regarding maintaining the 1800s Spanish mission style of um, the development. And I'm just wondering if architectural integrity is the term we want to use okay. uh, versus, say, architectural character. Okay. Um, one could imply that we can't alter the structures um, versus uh, maintaining the style. So um, I, I don't want to uh, prohibit structural renovations. So I'm just uh, recommending uh, changing um, integrity to character. character. If everyone else so agrees. Um, the other question I had is regarding um, a permit with the local school district. Uh, do private schools in West Sacramento require a permit from either the Washington uh, School District or the state? No. 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 They don't? No. Okay. It seemed to be there was that K through uh, 12 that we um, approved out near Stillwater um, Avenue and they had difficulties obtaining the permit? That was for their charter. They were the seeking, they had uh, approached Washington Unified School District to see if they could uh, obtain their charter through Washington Unified. Okay. But it's not, it's not a requirement. Okay. Uh, regarding the state, um, a permit through the state would be required if they were uh, accepting funding from the state. Okay, I think that's it. Otherwise, uh, comments, uh, I think a school is an, an appropriate use. I don't think we can limit a school when there's a school that the uh, city promoted right across the street. Um, so uh, welcome you guys to the city. Thank you, Mr. Liebig. Other comments or questions from commissioners? Mr. Moore. Yeah, I have a couple questions I called in a little earlier and I asked, and I'm not quite sure I understand the building process because what we see tonight isn't a total build out of what the school is going to look like and what they're going to do completely because we have no idea what the play facilities are or anything else. But who is ultimately going to control the building process? Is it going to be the city or the state? It's going to, it's going to be the city. Okay. And there's, there are conditions in the conditions of approval that plans have to comply with all building, fire, energy codes. So we're going to make sure So we'll comply. be doing things like sprinklers and the handicap Correct. accessible and things of that nature. And the bathrooms in particular, you know, they showed that they're being removed from the classrooms and that... I didn't get the first part of your question, but all of this is going to be reviewed at the building permit stage. And it's going to be reviewed against appropriate building codes. The, uh -huh. so, the require, when they bring forth their construction plans to convert uh, the first phase of the building into a, uh, a children's school, they will have to do upgrades uh, according to the building and fire and energy codes, not only for the structure to make it current, but also to, to, um, to serve the needs of the occupants, which will be children. So the bathrooms will have to meet uh, appropriate heights. Um, there may or may not be the requirement for doors or, or not on the, the stalls, depending on the age of the children. Okay. Will we see this again, or is this just go directly to staff? No, that, that will be under the purview of the building official and the fire marshal who's present here this evening. You know you can trust Jason, huh? I but, trust him with my life. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> I, okay, I, I, I I'm not, don't have a problem with the school. I have a problem. The only question I had was the fact of whether or not we were going to see what was actually going to be built because I guess our preview tonight is strictly can you have a school? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Other question, Mr. Morzini. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the applicant for uh, 
allowing me to take a, a tour. It was very enlightening. Uh, I remember the facility when it was the El Rancho Hotel, and we reminisced a little bit with with uh, the folks there regarding how it's changed. And I, I have to say, uh, the interior, particularly, is just absolutely beautiful. The way it's been it's been maintained, and uh, I know from time to time the public is invited to to attend there, and, and it was nice to see a uh, place where I used to sneak in and swim once in a while when I was a kid, and and uh, uh, to see that uh, uh, there's going to be a potential opportunity for another school in, in West Sacramento. We're getting quite a, quite a lot of schools that are locating private schools with the tech centers and, and the charter school and, and uh, this, this proposal here. And th it is a little confusing. I'm glad Commissioner Moore asked those, the questions that he did because this, we're re this is really a land use issue here. And, and I do have uh, one slight concern, and that is, and, and I mentioned it to, to the applicants, that because we're not seeing the details as far as uh, what architectural changes are going to be and the ADA requirements and things, that trying to narrow it down to just land use, I think it's it's important to to know note the specific location of of the school portion of this complex, and being a former hotel, uh, it wasn't built that facility wasn't built to uh, to for ease of access to that particular location, and in particular like with fire trucks. And I'm glad to see that uh, we have somebody from our fire department here that might be able to enlighten us a little bit, because it is, uh, uh, it was pointed out to me that, that uh, there are fire uh, hydrants, and there are all over the place there, but as far as emergency access, I know in some of the projects that we've approved before, like in residential cul-de-sacs, there was a maximum uh, limit of 600 feet before you had turnarounds and actually before there were two two accesses required. And I guess from a, a land use perspective, uh, if the fire department was going to require an emergency access that would might be from Garden Street or, or West Capitol Avenue or Highway 275, it would be important to kind of know that ahead of time because um, that May impact the plans of the of the applicant, and so that was my concern that uh, only one way in and one way out of that facility. If in the plan check process in the review, uh, there might be a requirement uh, for an additional emergency uh, access. And I'm just wondering if if our fire folks have have reviewed this this proposal to the point that that determination might be able to be made. And it looks like I'm going to get an answer yeah. here. Um, I have reviewed the proposal, and there are specific requirements in the, both the fire and the building code, uh, specifically the fire code that address access. Um, and th those issues are typically brought up at the building review stage when they submit their construction documents. So uh, I would say that issue is, um, is something that will definitely be looked at, and it's hard to uh, comment on it without seeing their construction documents in a little more detail to see where that process takes us. Okay, because if it was determined that you needed another access, it would be uh, incumbent to be able to have uh, structurally uh, another way in there, correct? So I guess that's my concern is that by looking at it as a layperson, it looks like there are a couple other uh, locations that might access that property, and I'm just wondering if you and, noticed. Uh, West Sacramento does not have anything over and above what's been adopted by the state as far as uh, distance and fire access and things of that nature, and that would be something the architect and I uh, would hope to look at, they would look at uh, prior to submittal, and then we might have a comment back to them in the plan review stage as far as if that meets the, the fire code and, and, and uh, the access issues. So that'd be determined early on then? Uh, the project review committee would look at it soon? Absolutely. That, that's what that meeting is for. We get into that room and, and say uh, prior to a first submittal, these are some issues that, that need to be addressed. And uh, um, without uh, seeing any kind of plans, I would uh, I would not want to comment on sure. that design I understand. project. Uh -huh. with, okay. re with regard, if I might jump in, uh, Mr. Morzini. So with regard to the item before us, because it's a use, it's about using that the, the property for this 
for this use a condition that says the proposed use shall comply with all applicable building, fire, and energy codes and standards means that, that there would be a review and all those that's, things would have correct. to be met in order for the land use, this change to happen, or the, the use to happen. That's correct. Thank you. Sure. All right. Okay, that's all I have. Great, thank you, Mr. Morzini. Other comments? Mr. Mr. Galvan? Uh, Sandra, I just have a question, and, and I do think this is a, a worthwhile project, but I'm curious, in finding number three, where you discuss uh, the amount of trips or increase of trips into that little Merkley area, how do we determine uh, if it would increase, in fact, increase uh, uh, the traffic issues in that area? We use the uh, our traffic, uh, transportation specialists use the, um, what's called the ITE <clears throat> manual. It's, uh, ITE is Institute of Transportation Engineers, and it's an informational document based on trip generation studies and it's a tool that's used to estimate the number of vehicle trips based on a specific land use. And so based on the information she gathered from the ITE manual, it, that's, these are the numbers that she generated for us to determine if you know, a traffic uh, analysis would be required. So that's how we came up with those numbers. With regard to the trigger, um, which I think is what you're referring to, they're going to have their first phase of construction. We looked at those numbers um, via the ITE manual, and those will not generate the trips that would trigger the traffic study. However, they will need to come in for a building permit at their second phase. That's when we'll look at the traffic generation that's occurring with the first phase and then evaluate uh, the second phase. And that may involve laying some traffic count strips to double check the uh, the vehicle counts. So that's that will be the trigger is the next phase of the building permit. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions or comments from the commissioners? I'll just say that I'm um, supportive of this moving forward. I think this would be a great addition to our community and it's also it would be a proud moment for us to only to be the fourth in the whole um, US to have a school like this in West Sacramento. So any, I know there was one request to, um, to modify one condition number six, but other than that, I'll look, I'll look for a, a motion from the commission. I'll move the recommended action with the uh, change to condition number six to read architectural character. Um, character. Thank you. Is I'll there second a the second, motion. seconded by, moved by Mr. Liebig, seconded by Mr. Moore. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Congratulations. All right, we'll move oh, on to. We need to read yes. the appeal. I'm sorry, the appeal to... process. Thank you. If anyone wanted to appeal. Any interested party may appeal the decision of the Planning Commission in this matter that was just before them to the City Council by filing a written appeal with the City Clerk, who's located on the third floor of City Hall within 15 days of tonight's action. The appeal must be accompanied by the appropriate appeal filing fee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to item number three. We'll wait just one moment <laughs> for folks to depart. They probably don't care about the tattoo parlor <laughs> right now, huh? <laughs> it's okay. All right, so we'll move on to item number three, which is a public hearing regarding the Victory Inc. conditional use permit at 1001 Jefferson Boulevard, number 900. The, ap the applicant is seeking a conditional use permit for a type two parlor at 1001 Jefferson Boulevard in the Jefferson Square Commercial Center. Uh, this site is developed with a multi-tenant commercial building that is currently occupied by several businesses. The applicant proposes to operate the parlor within an 850 square foot tenant space. In addition to tattoo services, body piercing will also be provided. The tattoo shop will be open Monday through Saturday, 12 p.m. to 9 p.m. And initially, one uh, person will be employed. And as the business grows, it could potentially employ up to three to four tattoo artists. Um, 
tattoo parlors are regulated by the Yolo County Environmental Health Department and the applicant has already submitted the appropriate paperwork to the county in the event that the use permit is approved this evening. Uh, staff did receive a phone call from uh, one resident, Evelyn Rose, who resides at 301 Webster Street and indicated that she is opposed to the project. Other than that phone call, staff has not received any phone calls from any of the surrounding uh, neighbors. Since all the findings can be made for the project, staff is recommending that the Planning Commission conduct a public hearing, certify that the Planning Commission has reviewed and considered the proposed categorical exemption as presented by staff, and approve the requested condition of use permit subject to the findings and conditions as identified in the staff report, and the applicant is uh, available present tonight. I'm available to answer any questions that the Planning Commission may have as well. Thank you, Ms. White. Any questions of staff at this time? All right, I'll open the public hearing and ask the applicant if they would like to make a presentation or if they want to be available to answer questions. I'm Racina Tilson. This and I'm Greg Rodriguez. It's my fiance, applicant. Um, I'm obviously a participant. Uh, we're totally open to questions you may have. I know a lot of people have questions about this type of business. Um, he actually does tattoos in Sacramento County as of right now. Uh, wants to move it to West Sac. We're both born and raised here. Our family's from here. And I know it's, it's a dream of ours, so we want to bring it to the town we love. Um, WESAC is moving on with, uh, you know, having art galleries. I know there's one in the uh, Civic Center, I believe. Uh, so that's also what we want to provide uh, for local artists is to have, we are also painters and um, sketch artists and stuff. So we'd like to have that uh, so they can come in and put their art on our walls and sell it off our walls and kind of make it a community collaborative event. So um, that's what we'd like to offer. Offer uh, fundraisers for art in schools. Um, had art in school, but you know it's it's something that could always be improved upon. And um, our passion to it. So. Any questions? Thank you. Questions of the commissioners? Oh, I, okay, I, Mr. Liebig. I know I'm going to have some questions. Okay. Um, I, I have some some statements too, but. Um, Ah, the, um, uh, under your statement of uh, justification, uh, you included tattoo and art gallery, and I know that the actual um, conditional use permit only covers the tattoo parlor, uh, right. not we, the art. We were told that the <coughs> art gallery portion doesn't need a conditional use permit. Um, I, uh, I'm ha I'm, first of all, I'm happy to see... Uh, local citizens opening a business, honestly. Um, I think that's great, and I think it's great that we have the opportunity to support local businesses. Um, and in turn, I think it's great that you want to support the community. Um, and that's that's the part that kind of triggered my question. Um, how, how could you, or how do you foresee supporting, say, the students at the high school? Uh, uh, well, we plan on doing fundraisers such as, you know, $20 tattoo and all the proceeds would go to that um, different things. I mean, just as far as uh, selling our art pieces for fundraisers. Um, and most students would be over the age of 18, so. Well, that's, yeah. <laughs> um, so anything like that and all proceeds would go to uh, River City High School or DC. Okay, thank you. That was the only question I had of the, actu of the applicant. Mr. Moore just, looks like he has a question. Well, right. I, I didn't until now. I, do you have to be a certain age to get a tattoo? 18. Mm -hmm. With a Does valid, it hurt? California driver's license. Does it hurt? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. I just. Sure. Well, okay. Okay. okay, we're going down the, the row here, <laughs> Mr. Kelpon. So, since you have to be 18, is it, is it a business that's regulated or licensed by the state? Um, it is regulated. We have forms that they actually have to fill out. Um, you're basically signing your skin away, but it also <laughs> says that you are as 18 years of age. Um, we also photocopy the ID onto the back of that form that they have signed. And that's is, is there a licensing process for the actual tattoo artists? No. no. There is a bloodborne pathogen certification they have to take. Obviously, environmental health. Uh, we have to go through as far as a tattoo artist certification. There is none. So actual business inspections are conducted by environmental health. 
Oh, that's right. That was in here. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Other Thanks. questions of the applicants? Applicant. Sorry. All right. Thank you very much. There are no requests to speak from, from other members of the public, so <clears throat> I'll go ahead at this time with no more questions from the commission and close the public hearing and bring it back to us for deliberation. Other comments about the... I just yes. had a question maybe for staff. Well, first of all, uh, Ms. Ms. Rose, is that who sent in the, the comment? Uh, how far is her residence from the actual location? Do we know? How far is her residence from... So, so does she? She's within the 500 foot radius. Can, and can so you visually see that from her residence? Is she off no. to the side? No. Okay, so it's it's not okay. All right. And uh, I'm trying to pick, remember which which. If you go to attachment one, yeah. attachment one in the staff report. Oh, you're right. Thank you. They're going to be in the back of the, um, the, the tenant space that they're going to occupy is in the rear of the, the last unit of the building. So by the restaurant? Uh, it's further, the, yeah, okay. several suites down. Yeah, at the back. It's, it would be towards the end yeah. near Seoul Street. Mm -hmm. okay. Exactly, yeah. And uh, Ms. Rose is on the corner of Webster and Jefferson at 301. So there might be some visibility through landscape shrubs, but it. But there's several other businesses between that business and, and this business. Yes. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just curious, uh, uh, with it finding number two, do we have, or how many businesses like this do we already have in the city? I don't think so. I don't believe so because uh, t tattoo parlors are, are, are conditionally permitted, and I believe this is the first. This is the first one that I recall us processing. So, so this provides a service that we don't have Correct. existing already. Correct. Okay. Thank you. And I have just one question about. So, so if if we approve this, it's actually for that particular um, unit within the. <clears throat> It's not. It's not for that whole. The whole space. It's just the number nine hundred. Yes. Okay. Okay. Correct. That's just to fake. be That's to fake. relay to the the call you had. It wouldn't. It wouldn't necessarily have to come back if if the unit where the the tattoo parlor it moved closer to Jefferson. They'd have to come back to make that change, or is it? Because it looks like it's just for that number nine nine hundred. It would might or be, would a, be a minor, whole just, a minor, just a minor modification. Okay. Because oh, okay. the representation right. Right. is that it's going to be. A, one space and then right. And if they built out, okay, I understand. Thank you. Question: This may be just more curiosity, and we may need to open this for the applicant. But uh, is this a, the type of business where it's usually appointment people, or is there a big, huge drop in? Do I need to reopen the public? All right. So, so sorry. We're, just so that if people people so, will watch our commissions at home, so I'll, I'll go ahead and open the public hearing again. If you could come back actually and speak into the mic, that would just be helpful for us. Thank you very much. Not sure people. Okay. Sometimes maybe a person. <laughs> <laughs> or people might view it later. How, how is what, what is the industry standard for that type of? It, it's by appointment. There so are there's not a lot of walk-in, well, drop-in. There's walk-ins welcome. Um, sure. It's it's really usually by. Yeah. And, he and fills up fast. <laughs> again, this may be more curiosity, but how, how many as an artist? How many uh, appointments did you see in a day on average? Um, if it was a full day. Some days, two, three. Yeah, days, days, four. Five. It's timely depends. process. It really depends on how big the piece is, and you know. Thank you. While we're open with public hearing, any other, find any other questions no, of the applicant? All right. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. I'll close that the reopen public hearing and bring it back for deliberation and any motions from the commission. Madam Chairman, I'd make a motion that we affirm the recommended action. There's a motion to approve the recommended action. Is there a second? I'll second that. So moved by Mr. Moore, seconded by Mr. Galvan. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. All right. I think we'll wait for Mr. Oh. Morzini to rejoin us. And oh, in the field, read, read the appeal. Again. Sorry. <laughs> I keep reading. I'll get, I'll get I've been on doing track this for a year. This. you think I would get it right by now. <laughs> Any interested party may appeal the decision of the Planning Commission in this matter to the City Council by filing a written appeal with the City Clerk 
who's located on the third floor of City Hall, within 15 days of tonight's action. The appeal must be accompanied by the appropriate appeal filing fee. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that brings us to our um, last item of this evening, item number four, which is a public hearing regarding the proposed budget truck and car rental facility on 2415 Front Street. Hi, Mr. Tilley. Uh, good evening, Chair Cindy and members of the Planning Commission. Um, as you stated, we are here in a public hearing format regarding the proposed um, franchise location for a budget truck and car rental facility. Um, this would be located at 2415 Front Street, um, which is in the heavy industrial area on north of the port and just south of uh, Highway 50 and um, east of Harbor Boulevard. Um, this is a multi-tenant building, but each suite has a separate address. So 2415 uh, Front Street is one of the suites um, within the, the larger building. Um, this site does propose to rent both uh, moving vehicles and also passenger vehicles. I'd like to clarify that the conditional use permit tonight is specifically for the passenger vehicle rental um, facet of the project. Um, the truck rental and equipment rental is a permitted use in the heavy industrial zone. Uh, the project would occupy the existing tenant space and that would be where the office and customer area would be located. And then vehicles would be stored either in the paved uh, parking spaces on the front of the building or in a rear storage yard, uh, which uh, we recognize um, the paving has deteriorated substantially and we have included a condition to address the paving of that facility since according to the municipal code, any vehicle parking or maneuvering areas would need to be paved. So the, again, the project was will be proposing a class one category exemption since this is an existing building and an existing <laughs> facility. Uh, we believe that this project will, will be fit within the surrounding industrial area and uh, staff is recommending approval of the project tonight. Um, on the request of Commissioner Moore, I did uh, visit the facility last night um, after dark and did notice that there were two um, rather bright lights at the rear of the building that were shining out onto the storage area for security, which um, I believe is necessary out there. However, those lights do um, shine onto Terminal Street as you're heading northbound um, quite, quite greatly. So that is a matter we'll need to work with the applicant on to get those lights either hooded or shielded so that they remain within the property boundaries and um, don't present a hazard to drivers, especially northbound traffic on Terminal Street. So with that, I would like to close my presentation and happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Mr. Tilly. Are there any questions for Mr. Tilly at this time? Madam Chairman, I, I do have okay, one. Mr. Morzini. I, I, thank you. I, you cleared up the question in my mind regarding the truck component because I noticed in the, in the conditions it does say it, this is for passenger cars, although the application, the subject of the application uh, it says proposed budget truck and car rental facility. Um, is there a need to amend the title of this? Well, we did want to describe the whole of the project for the commission since it would be operating, you know, within the same facility and people could, up, um, you know, rent either type of vehicle at this location. But technically the use permit is for um, passenger vehicles. Because condition one, you do clarify that in condition one. Yes that it is for passenger vehicles. Yeah. So that you're satisfied that that's conclusive enough to, and yes. descriptive enough? Yes. Okay. And the applicant surely knows that too, I presume. All right, thank you. Um, other questions? Okay. Oh, um, that's I'm really sorry. big. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Tilly, the, um, the project is dealing with vehicles and so we're gonna have uh, customer vehicles and business vehicles. Uh, is there a restriction uh, in the zoning area for parking um, the business vehicles on the street? On, st on, st on street parking, uh, the, to my knowledge, there wouldn't be any specific prohibition on if any of their rental vehicles were parked on the street or not. They wouldn't be treated any differently than any other vehicles that are parked uh, you know, out there and subject to uh, any any of the overnight parking requirements or anything for, uh, elsewhere in the municipal code. Okay. And I didn't visit the site. Is there parking uh, adjacent to this business on yep. either Front Street or Terminal? 
Uh, there is parking on the front street. It'll announce, or it's, a lot of that parking is seem to be consumed by large trucks that are parked out there. I noticed that last night as well. Um, but there is parking available. Okay, thank you. Any final questions or other questions of Mr. Tilly? No, I guess I, okay, guess I do. Moore. You know, you were talking about they were going to park some of the cars or trucks in the front of the building. Is there a, a limit as to how many they could park there? Just because it is a multi-tenant building? Uh, the limit, there likely would be a limit with terms of his lease with the landlord. Maybe that's the space. answer. Because, yeah. I mean, you got to have customer <clears throat> parking, too, mm -hmm. so... You don't want a ton of rentals out in front. Yeah, and there's also well, there the facility, the tent space does have a small warehouse component to it. The applicant has indicated that he may uh, also keep vehicles in there. Okay. All right. And Mr. Tilly, do we have a presentation by the applicant, or is um, the applicant he, available to answer uh, questions? He is present here tonight. I don't believe he has a formal presentation, okay. but would be available for questions. All right. So we don't have, I don't have any requests from other members of the public to speak Actually, at this I think you want to time. Speak. So if the applicant would like to address us or answer any of the questions you've just heard or be available for questions, if you could introduce yourself, that would be helpful as well. Naveen Dwarka, and I'm the applicant. Uh, good evening, Madam Chairman and members of the commission. Uh, just to answer your question, so um, on the front of the building, there is sufficient customer parking rental cars they will be all parked at the back of the building when the customer needs a car we pull the car forward that's terrific but i mean when he made his presentation he said something about you're going to park something in front and there have to be some sort of a limit or your neighbors might get upset with you if you had 40 cars out there yes that's definitely yeah. right. yes and, and that's what I, I face on my current location right now so we have only customer parking is front. When a customer comes in to rent a car, the employee pulls the car from the back to the front, and Perfect. the customer drives away. Firstly, I'd like to thank the City of West Sacramento in giving me the opportunity to pursue my business. I have already operating budget truck at the location. I'm very grateful for David's support in uh, making this successful so far. Uh, currently, I run a successful operation out of uh, Madison and Urban Boulevard, and I plan to do the same over here. Further to the recommended co conditions of approval as recommended by the planning division, I'm in compliance with, with the conditions in C Commission's amendment on condition number three, and that is the paving of the exterior vehicle storage area. As you see on the... Uh, Planning Commission agenda report on Exhibit A1. The proposed car and truck rental storage as shown has a firm base and may have been paved at one point. It also has not been maintained and as a result it deteriorated over the years. I plan to gravel this lot and make it much more appropriate. The paved yard between the building and the fence lot, again on Exhibit A1, is where the vehicles will be parked the warehouse will store passenger vehicles, passenger cars, right? Alternatively, uh, the paved yard on the far left, again on A1, which is a paved lot, it may come available in due course. I believe the one of the tenants is uh, letting that paved yard. Uh, it has been a very exhausting and stressful 14 months. I've been trying to open this business in West Sacramento and with various obstacles, paperwork from the planning, et cetera, I, I, and I've pulled this through. Budget is a national company, a national brand, but all the groundwork, capital, and financial investment is on my shoulder. And coming again on the uh, asking for the lot to be paved, if you drive down in West Sacramento, most of the lot that stores vehicle and equipment are dirt land or unpaved lot. So it is my request that I be granted to operate my business out of here. Paving this lot will cost me 30,000 plus and as a small business owner to start this uh, is a big investment and especially when the property does not belong to me. I want to make this plea to you today that this requirement be waived and I'll be allowed to operate my business out of 2415. Thanks. 
Thank you. Are there um, questions of the applicant at this time? I have one. Okay, Mr. Morzini. Uh, thank you. Uh, I did a little site visit there, and I noticed that uh, at the Terminal Street entrance, there's a, a gate there that is normally locked, and there are other tenants that uh, are using part of that parking lot. So there's traffic going in and out of there probably on a continuous basis. Is there any provision going to be made to isolate your activity from the rest of that? In other words, so if cars are coming in, in and out for your facility at uh, our, how, how is that going to be handled so that the gate uh, can remain open for, for your folks and, and, and maintain security for the other tenants. The gate is remain open 24 hours, the one out of Terminal Street. The gate which where the storage yard is, that I have to lock. Uh, it has been, I started November 5th. I already have, uh, I think three times that gas has been stolen. So mm -hmm. the lot where I'm storing, that is fully locked. But still, people jump over the fence to steal. I see. Yes. So, if I'm understanding you correctly, the Terminal Street main gate is going to remain open, that, that and you will secure open. your facility. Yes. And so, on uh, the attachment that we have, the existing site plan, you're only going to be in that area, this proposed car rental and truck storage area. That Correct. that's the only that's location the only that you'll be. The parking spot, the existing way in front of the. Uh, storage yard that says existing parking spots, mm -hmm. I am I can fully utilize those parking spots also. I see. And that's why I intend to park the cars before a customer comes. So kind of walk me through this a little bit. If I was to go and rent a car from you, I would probably enter on the front street, go in your office and rent a car. Then would you give me the keys and I walk back there and get... No. How the would employee that? will bring the car forward in, uh, on front street and do the walkthrough and hand you the keys. And that's where I'd return it also? That's where the return is also. Okay, so the, the customer doesn't have any contact with the storage area at all, no. I see. Okay, that makes only sense. For employees. All right, thank you. Other questions, Mr. Le Mr. Liebig? Of the applicant, thank you. Um, regarding your, your comment about the theft of the gas, are you already operating the truck rental? Yes, truck rental, um, uh, it was already permitted to operate. Um, and again, I, I failed to see a reason I was allowed to operate trucks, but not cars. Oh, so just, just for clarification, this is an existing business that we're um, yes, budget truck adding a conditional use permit to operate um, a, a passenger vehicle. Correct. Okay, I, d I didn't catch that it was an existing business. Um, for most of my questions actually are focused on the trucks, even though I know that's um, um, permitting, uh, permitted. So uh, I, I have some concerns about um, parking on, of the rental vehicles on the streets overnight. If, there, if there's concerns over security, though, it sounds like you want them behind the Yes, I, I, the and most of the trucks, the customers will bring it before 5 o'clock or they bring it the following day. Overnight parking unless it's at customer's risk, but on Terminal Street and also on Front Street, it's mostly you have UPS trailer that occupy just about every parking spot there, so there's no parking anywhere in the evening. Okay. Um, I think that's uh, my only questions for the applicant. Okay. It looked like Mr. Moore, you had a, did you have a question? Well, I, you know, I, I understand this concern about paving the lot, and that's always a concern of everybody that comes in. But the lots you probably have seen that are gravel that are not paved are probably people that existed prior to us even becoming a city. And, David, I, I guess my question on the paving is, is that not a requirement in the city when you open a new business that Yeah, this this comes up actually fairly fairly frequently in any yard any yards. 
that we have in town in commercial industrial properties and any anywhere where vehicles will be either maneuvered or stored you know needs to be paved on a durable and dustless surface and that's you know that's a objective standard in the parking section of the zoning ordinance so by us granting him a variance to that we really be granting him a special privilege well we're we we're not we're, we yeah we don't have a we don't have formally have a variance in front of the commission tonight so I want you know caution on you know, you know using that um, that term tonight since we, we don't we have not noticed the project in that manner uh, but the, the paving is a you know standard requirement for yard, yards and I guess point of clarification uh, you said durable and dustless um, does that mean paving or can that can that imply gravel or decomposed granite or um, pavers well yeah. the um, the obviously you know concrete and asphalt are the you know typical things we think of when, when durable and dustless um, but the um, zoning ordinance also provides for masonry turf stones or other comparable durable and dustless surfaces and it does um, provide um, deference to the city's engineering standards for other surfaces that may be durable and dustless um, and the other aspect of this why paving is important from a water quality standpoint um, need to make sure that you know storm water you know isn't tracking you know dirt and other materials into the storm drain um, off the site and that's why partially why paving is important and in this case when we're talking about vehicles there's you know leaky fluids and other matters that you know need to be contained Sorry, mr. Moore no problem I my my other comment to you was the lighting did you happen to David talk to you about the lighting yes uh, we have mentioned it to the property uh, yeah it kind of just needs to be have something put on it I drove over they, there they and just it was changed that lighting after I had mentioned it was too dark Oh, you've got to have the lighting. I wasn't <laughs> suggesting you take it down. I was just saying, you know, sometimes they put up a little screen or something, a barrier that kind of focuses it on your property because it was really, one of them was just coming right out in the street yeah. for some reason, or it, I felt it was when I drove by. Okay, that was all. Any other comments or questions? All right. Thank you very much. I'll bring it back to the commission now. Close the public hearing for our deliberation. <clears throat> Any other uh, questions and comments? I actually have, I'll, I'll share mine if, if there's no, no others at this time, but I'll continue to keep it open until we have a, a motion on the floor. But I actually, um, with all due respect to the request, I, I actually, I, I think it would be great to have um, a passenger rental facility in, in our city. I like the tattoo parlor and like other things that have come before us. So I don't know <laughs> that we have we have that many or any of those one one of those facilities um, I, I think though the requirement of, of paving especially for a passenger car facility with lots there'll be lots of I think in and out I I I think it's actually a, a, an appropriate condition for this so with, with all due respect for the request I, I actually would would be comfortable moving this forward with the conditions intact but I I'm open to other other comments or questions or actions to move forward. I would I would agree with you, Madam Chairman, regarding moving forward with this one. But as far as if there's if there's any uh, uh, anything that can be done regarding the the wording of the durable and dustless to maybe indicate in the future uh, what uh, what that would consist of. You indicated, David, that it's typically asphalt or concrete but uh, I think that there's also uh, there would be uh, presumed to be some um, engineering standards that have to be met too as far as uh, weight carrying capabilities and that sort of thing so uh, I wouldn't I, I don't think you were trying to imply that that's all that's all we want to do is keep the dust down it's also the maintain the integrity and I and I, I have to say over the years places like roadway trucking and there have been uh, numerous applicants that have come before us and that's always been a requirement that the, any area that's that's traveled on be paved and uh, I, I certainly wouldn't want to deviate from that tonight however um, if there is any misunderstanding of what that term is the durable and dustless 
maybe we might want to take a look at that and shore it up so that it's very clear to anybody that uh, that's what that's what we're asking for yeah th there is a little more um, depth that provided within the city standard specifications and it does address the not just the dustless part but the durability of bait and the suitability of the pavement design um, for the type of use and type of vehicles that are expected to use you know to utilize that you know be they heavy trucks or more passenger vehicles thank you with that I'd like to make a motion if uh, now would be a time that we approve the recommended action is there a, a mo motion motion by mr. Morzini is there a second I'll second that motion seconded by mr. Galvan all those in favor please signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed passes unanimously and um, really Ms. Hamilton, I think I'll get this correct. Would you please read the appeal <laughs> procedure? <laughs> Any Third time's a charm. Yeah. <laughs> Any interested party may appeal the decision of the Planning Commission in this matter to the City Council by filing a written appeal with the City Clerk, which is located on the third floor of City Hall, within 15 days of tonight's action. The appeal must be accompanied by the appropriate appeal filing fee. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that brings us to our informal discussion. And I'll just share that there's a, a reminder that the January 6th meeting of the Planning Commission has been canceled. I also understand, um, per our kind of practices, the um, and and Ms. Hamilton mentioned that the City Council will be making or is planning to making make appointments to all the commissions. It's I believe it's it's the requirement for us that as soon as that's done, the following meeting is when we elect a chair and vice chair of the commission. So that could happen if it's noticed at our next meeting, if they, if the council makes all those appointments or it may be early in February, just as a, a heads up to folks. <laughs> <laughs> I've enjoyed my time as chair. <laughs> I'm also happy to, to, to oh, share, right. <laughs> share the joy with others. See, so um, you're keeping her on a straight and narrow. You're letting her yes. know what you're expecting. Huh? And any other, um, any other notices from, or things we need to know before we close this evening? Nothing from staff? Nothing further. All right, well, happy holidays, folks. Is motion there, to adjourn. Motion to adjourn happy by holidays. Mr. Moore. Is there a second? A second. second. Sec oh, two seconds. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, good evening. Thank you.